Hey everyone, welcome back to the NPT Podcast. This is Will Crane, your host. Thank you so much for joining me as we go through the content you need in order to dominate on test day. So today we've got a practice question queued up for you. We've got, uh, as always, we're going through the FSBPT content outline. The goal today is to talk through the cardiovascular and pulmonary system. This is the third largest system on the exam, so we'll spend some time with that. But before we do, just a quick reminder, be sure to check out ptfinalexam.com. We have our ongoing courses, not the least of which is our crash course, which we are starting up this week in preparation for the July NPTE administration. Now, as I've mentioned in previous episodes, the the crash course, the PT crash course, this is meant to be a very quick, brief review of a multiplicity of topics related to the big three systems, cardio, muscular, and neuro, so that you can get another half dozen, dozen, two dozen more questions correct on test day, going through the items that are the most likely to be tested, the easiest to write questions about, and seem to show up pretty much every exam administration. So if you want to boost your score in a very quick and effective way, a way that's much better than just cramming or just locking yourself in the basement going through the content, be sure to check out the PT Crash Course, which we're starting up this week, which includes synchronous and asynchronous content. So you can get your questions answered. Uh, you get access to our exclusive Telegram group, it's a place where you can get questions answered, reach out to other, other students, participants, be able to really be engaged these last few weeks. There's really nothing more isolating than locking yourself in the basement and going through content by yourself, wondering if you're doing it right, if you're going through enough content. That's the nice part about going through the PT crash course is that you have a cohort to go with you, uh, lots of people cheering for you in your corner, plus lots of video content, both synchronous and asynchronous. I think you'll like it. Be sure to, ch sure to check out ptfinalexam.com to find everything you need for the PT crash course. So today we're talking through the cardiovascular and pulmonary system. So as you recall, this is the third, third largest system on the exam, somewhere between 23 and 28 questions. And as always, as we get closer and closer to 2024, they will be updating the number of questions, meaning that they will reduce the number by a few because they're going to start doing some scenario-based questions, which really... I don't want to say you'll be underwhelmed necessarily, but it'll just put a lot more information into a scenario or like a patient chart, and then you have to answer questions about the patient chart. And ostensibly, this will take a little bit longer, so they will reduce the number of questions, but they will maintain the same proportion of questions. So everything we've talked about in all of our previous episodes and currently through these episodes, really for the next couple of months until we start really uh, pushing out 2024 episodes, all of that remains the same. And so with that in mind, we will continue to go through the FSBPT content outline as it's published for the 2023 test. Then we'll update again when we get to the 2024 administrations. Again, they're not going to really reinvent the content. It's really just the proportion. Well, and even the proportions are, will remain about the same. They will just be adding a slight different style of questions in addition to these normal, what we would consider normal multiple choice questions. So that's a question I get all the time is... Will the 2024 test be just scenario-based questions? And the answer is no. No, they'll have a few scenario-based questions. They, they don't have a, an exact number pinned down, somewhere between 20 and 40 scenario-based questions. And then the rest will be just your regular standalone multiple choice questions. So it's, it'll be a mix of both. So without further ado, let's go ahead and dive into our practice question for today. So again, this related to the cardiovascular and pulmonary system. Which of the following classes of medications is most likely to directly reduce myocardial oxygen demand? So which of the following classes of medications is most likely to reduce myocardial, to directly reduce myocardial oxygen demand? Angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitors or ACE inhibitors, beta blockers, that's number two, beta blockers, three anticoagulants, and four thrombolytic agents. So we've got which of the following classes of medications is most likely to directly reduce myocardial oxygen demand? Number one, angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitors. Two, beta blockers. Three, anticoagulants. And four, thrombolytic agents. So this question asking about how to directly reduce myocardial oxygen demand. Well, what does that mean? That means that you are reducing the amount of activity of the muscle or the system so they don't have as much oxygen demand. So the clear answer here is the beta blockers because beta blockers, their job is to reduce myocardial, or really to reduce cardiac heart rate. And by reducing heart rate, that is subsequently reducing the demand on the system. 
So think of it this way. If your heart is, is just at rest while you're sleeping, there's very little demand. But when you're running a marathon or running a sprint, doing something that requires a significant amount of exertion, you'd find that it would increase the demand on the system. I mean, your heart has to keep up, and so it has a lot more oxygen demand. So one of the key things that beta blockers do is they reduce the myocardial oxygen demand. So in the case that you have myocardial ischemia, so let's say you have, um, I don't know, let's say you have someone who has some type of, they're, they're undergoing myocardial ischemia, a heart attack, an occlusion of the, of the coronary arteries. They've got some atherosclerosis going on. What happens is that the heart feels stress and it, if it feels stress, it says, oh, we need to boost production. And so it starts to shoot up your heart rate. However, that's the exact opposite of what needs to happen because you have a poor supply. And so therefore to reduce the demand on the system, you bring down the heart rate. And so beta blockers are used primarily to reduce the demand on the system of the myocardial oxygen demand. Uh, these other items, the anticoagulants and thrombolytic agents, those are used to increase the myocardial oxygen supply. So in the case there was a blood clot, the anticoagulants or the, well, that's prophylactic. The anticoagulants would prevent blood clots and then the thrombolytic agents would destroy blood clots with the eye being, idea being that they would increase myocardial oxygen supply. So really what we're driving at here is that beta blockers reduce the demand, the anticoagulants and thrombolytics, they increase the supply. And then the ACE inhibitors also is involved in the supply side because when you reduce blood pressure, that's what ACE inhibitors primarily do, they reduce blood pressure. When you reduce that blood pressure or afterload, it makes it easier to push blood out in the system. Again, a supply issue, they're, they're more, more easily supplying the tissue because you've reduced the systemic vascular resistance. So that ACE, those ACE, ACE inhibitors are very helpful in reducing blood pressure, re reducing resistance. The anticoagulants also, and thrombolytic agents, both of those are increasing the supply by getting rid of blood clots. The one that directly reduces myocardial oxygen demand is that beta blocker. And just as a silly way, and you've heard me say this before, but the way I remember beta blockers, beta blockers always end in alol, like propanolol, meteprolol, they end in alol. And so, again, this is super silly, but the beta blockers, I just think of the BB. If you're going to play basketball, you have to have an alol. So basketball, alol, it kind of rhymes. So BB, basketball, alol, that's the beta blockers. So with that, we'll go ahead and bring today to a conclusion. As always, be sure to check out all the other episodes we have over on the NPT podcast. Lots of episodes now going through the FSBPT content outline. If you haven't yet, be sure to leave us a review over on Google Play, Apple iTunes, Spotify, anywhere you're listening to this podcast. It's super helpful as we try to get the word out. And as always, be sure to check out our ongoing courses over at ptfinalexam.com where you can join in. We will be coming up, just a little preview here, in August, we'll be starting up our VIP program. The VIP program goes through everything on the FSBPT content outline. It's a small group setting. It's a place where you can get your questions answered. It's one that I personally lead. So if you want to have the best content in the best format possible, you'll find that the VIP program is the one for you. All right, with that, we'll bring it to a conclusion. Thank you again. Will Crane fist bumps all around. I'll catch you all in the next episode. Have a fabulous day, everyone. Talk to you soon.